This morning is a powerful Sunday morning at the mission, if you haven't already noticed. The Bible says not only should we be hearers of the word, but what? Doers of the word. Today we commissioned and and we prayed an anointing and a blessing over Pastors John and Deanne. Um, And that means that we are being doers of the word and they are being doers of the word. It's the word in motion. Somebody say it's the word in motion. Today, Councilwoman Lula Davis Holmes, another sister in Christ, came to communicate with one of the churches um, of this great city of Carson. Uh, Can somebody say, we are doers of the word? It is our job as the church to strengthen those very bonds that we uh, we hold with uh, our community leaders, those who are civic uh, servants, those that God has called, um, literally called, to serve the great communities that we live in. And so we're thankful. We're thankful for her visit today. We're thankful that we as a church um, can bend our ear to the needs of this community. We're thankful that we have people in office that can exact and execute um, the word of God in, um, in office. Isn't that what we pray for? It's what we pray for as the church. And so we want, I just want to remind us all that everything that we saw happen here today is the word. So don't get all hung up and caught up on um, the message at the end of the service was shorter than usual. Don't get all caught up in legalism. We are hearing, we are living out the word of God. Every time we come together, we come together in fellowship and we are a mature church. Amen. I look around, I see folks that have known the Lord for quite some time. We are mature believers who are thankful um, and are crucial instruments to the body of Christ, the physical, the visible body of Christ at the great mission Ebenezer Family Church. So I want to commend you for your maturity. I want to commend you for um, allowing um, yourself to be um, reminded of this great, great work that God is doing in us today. And that's why Mission Mission Ebenezer is not just a local church we're a regional church. We're a, a church of, with national influence and international influence. Your money and tithes and prayers go all around the world. You need to know that. Um, and um, we're the kind of church that, that does not turn a blind eye nor a deaf ear to the needs of people even outside of the Christian community. If you're like me, your heart is very, very heavy this morning. Not because the Dodgers lost. That, I mean, it's a joke, really, right? I mean, we, we laugh, we have a good time about it. But because of the families that were taken, the people that were, that were uh, murdered at the synagogue, the Jewish synagogue in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We would be remiss as a church if we just kind of overshot that and not mentioned it. So being in the spirit of Christ this morning, I'm going to ask DeCron. DeCron, come on up right now. We're going to just, we're going to throw the script out out the window right now. Minister DeCron is going to play on the keyboard. I'm going to invite the people of God to stand up. If your heart is heavy this morning, it could be for any other reason. I'm going to invite you just to come to the altar right now. I'm going to invite you just to come to the altar right now and pray and seek the Lord and call down heaven. I'm going to invite you to just call down the Holy Spirit. Come on out. Come on out, Minister Nena. Hallelujah. As the as the Lord leads the people of God this morning. Be the church today. Be the church today. Yes, 
Let's stop thinking about ourselves for a, a moment. It's not about you this morning. It ain't about us. It ain't about me. It's about who God has called us to be. who the Holy Spirit wants you to be.
I'm going to read from Psalm 51. And I'm going to replace the singular pronoun me with us. I'm going to replace the singular pronoun of King David, I, with we. As we read this psalm together, David knew he did wrong in the eyes of the Lord, in the eyes of the people. He was in need of repentance. He needed to receive forgiveness for the sins that he had committed in his mind and in his heart and in his body. Lord, might this be our prayer today. Might this be the prayer of our country today. If I could so, go so far as to take responsibility politically, socially, and spiritually for the sins of this land. Holy Spirit, if you hear us, would you move? hearts of those whose hearts have been hardened by the lies of the enemy the devil's a liar he comes to kill steal and destroy he plays for keeps and he doesn't fight fair have mercy on us oh God according to your unfailing love according to your great compassion blot out our transgressions wash away all of our iniquity and cleanse us from our sins oh God people of God just ask the Lord for forgiveness right now just lift up your voice right now just ask God for forgiveness of sin for our sins that we committed yesterday the thoughts that we had I want to hear our voices I want to hear us church I want to hear us call out and ask God to forgive us of our sin Lift up your voices today, church. Let's lift up our voices today. Hallelujah. Father God, forgive us, Lord Jesus. Take our sin away, Lord Jesus. We cry out to you, Jesus. Yes. Sing it, Minister Nana. Sing it. Sing it, Jessica. Put up the words to great is thy faithfulness up here on the sidewalk that would be helpful for the people of God. Hallelujah. Let's sing that together. I can invite Pastor Coba to come forward. Is Pastor Coba here. Great is your grace.
forgive us for being a racist nation. Forgive us for being greedy. Forgive us for being selfish. For, forgive us for being a hateful nation. Forgive us, Father God, for being filled with so much brokenness and anger. But fill us with your mercy. Fill us with your grace, Father God. For we know our transgressions. And our sin is always before us. Against you, O Lord, and only you have we sinned and done evil in your sight. So that you are proved right when we speak and justified when you judge. Surely we were sinful at our birth. Sinful from the time of our conception. Surely you desire truth in our innermost being. And you teach us wisdom. In that inmost place, Father God, would you remove all of that filth, all of that brokenness, all of that anger. If there's anything, Father God, that is causing us to live with, with hatred, would you deliver us from that, Father God? Would you deliver us from thoughts of worthlessness and low self-esteem and depression, Father God? Cleanse us with hyssop that we might be clean. Wash us. And we will be whiter than snow. And let us hear joy and gladness. Let our bones, let our bones not be crushed by you, Lord. Hide your face from our sins and blot out all of our iniquities. Create in us a pure heart, O oh God. And renew a steadfast spirit within us. Do not cast us from your presence, O oh God, or take your Holy Spirit from us, but restore to us the joy of your salvation. Restore to the church today the joy of your salvation and grant us a willing spirit to sustain us. Then and only then will we teach transgressors your ways and sinners will turn, Lord Jesus, back to you. So save us from our blood guilt, O oh God. The God who saves us, our tongues will sing of your righteousness forever. Oh Lord, open our lips and our mouths that we might declare your praises, oh God. You do not delight in sacrifice or we would bring it. You don't take pleasure in burnt offerings. They are just a wash. But the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit a broken and contrite spirit, a broken and contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. And in your good pleasure, make Zion prosper. Lift up Jerusalem. Lift up our fellow Jewish brothers and sisters, Father God. Messiah, won't you appear to them in dreams and visions? Messiah, won't you pour out your spirit upon your people, Lord Jesus? Will it be the church that brings healing to that community, Lord Jesus? Might it be the church that shows its love in this moment of brokenness? Then there will be righteous sacrifices and whole burnt offerings that will actually bring you delight and the bulls that will be offered on your altar will be accepted Lord would you change our hearts would you renew our spirits change our hearts Lord Jesus even when we're apart from one another Lord Jesus and we feel that it's hard to live out the Christian life the Christian calling the Christian mission remind us that your Holy Spirit is there for us. Jesus reminded his disciples in John chapter 14 that even though he was going to leave them, that they, they shouldn't fret, they shouldn't be afraid, they should not be depressed because the Holy Spirit was being sent to them. So Holy Spirit, we receive you today. As Paul trained up, equipped, and commissioned Titus, to do the work that he was called to do in the, in the island of Crete. Literally an island. Crete was an island. Titus was living on an island. 
not just physically, but he felt like he was living on a spiritual island as well. We, and we know as Christians that we're called to live in community with one another and that we shouldn't, if we can afford, live on a spiritual island. But you know what? When we leave this, per, this place, when we break from this huddle, when we break and say, Team Jesus, and we go off into our, our different worlds and our different paths and to work, to play, to school, guess what? We're all by ourselves. We're together yet apart from one another. And it's in those moments when the enemy comes and tries to lie. And it's in those moments that we need to be renewed by the Spirit. We need to be reminded, just as Paul reminded Titus. It wasn't the law of Moses that he was to turn to, to be renewed. But it was the Spirit of God. It was the Holy Spirit who started that work and who continues that work. It's the Holy Spirit that, called, that Paul encourages Titus to hold on to when he feels lonely, when he feels alone, when he feels like there's nobody there that he can pick up a phone and call because he couldn't. He had to write letters that took weeks, maybe months. We know we as the church sometimes feel lonely and feel like, how can I do this? I can't do it on, on, our, on my own. And you know what? The, the, the answer to that is you're right. You need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives every day. Every day we need the Holy Spirit. So Father God, today, continue to give the Lord a hand clap today, church. Let's continue to give the Lord a hand clap, church. Father God, today we offer you our lives. Holy Spirit, come into our lives. Renew us today, Father God. Give us a steadfast spirit, a faithful spirit, Lord Jesus, that will remain faithful to you and to the work that you've called us to. We pray this in Jesus' name and the people of God said, amen and amen.